I'm Candace Hunter. And I'm Sue Sierra Lupe. And, and welcome, welcome Herbal Nerd, Nerd Society, Society members. members. This month's Herb of the Month is... Lemon Balm. So let's talk about that. Oh, I'm so glad. And the reason why you're seeing it that weird way is because <laughs> Lemon Balm is the herb of gladness. It sure is. Yep. Makes lemon. you happy. It's also known as uh, Melissa. Mm-hmm. Melissa, Melissa officinalis, yeah. Which comes from being called Melissa apparently ages ago, which has some kind of etymological tie to bees. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it is. It bees do love it. They do love it. Yep. They really love my lemon balm patch. Mm-hmm. They do. There's a lot of blossoms on it, and uh, I, I'm not sure how often it refreshes, but I know that a lot of the nectar in the mint family refreshes very quickly. I think it must refresh quickly. Mm -hmm. All I know is they absolutely adore it. Yes. Now, why do we adore it? Why do we love it? Because it makes us so happy. It It calms us down. It calms us down and it makes us, it helps us be at peace. I actually have a little story to tell. Ooh, So I was talking to this young man. Um, He was talking about his uh, mom, and they have a lot of siblings in the family, and one of them has autism, and the mom didn't want to give the the autistic, uh, his sister, uh, meds. And so he was talking about different things that they had tried with her to help her calm down. And I said, well, did you try lemon balm? And he didn't know about lemon balm, so I gave him some physical fresh lemon balm to try. And he was like, well, do you eat it? Chomp, chomp, chomp. Thank you for for asking next time wait for the answer <laughs> right <laughs> and that's okay if you would like to try it and as he was sitting there eating it he just you just saw him physically relax, relax. physically relax like wow this stuff really works yeah he, he just chewed on the leaves and uh he liked the the lemony taste of it and it really physically just watching him calm right mm-hmm. down yeah. Like, yeah, I gotta get, I gotta have my sister try this. This will really help her out because for her, it's not just feeling calm, but being able to focus and get get with her day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah people who have deal with autism and and Aspergers can often feel like the world is overwhelming. Yeah, like it's oppressing them with all the stimulation. Yep. One of the things that lemon balm is particularly good at is helping to ease the anxiety, the frustration, and the depression that comes when you feel completely oppressed. Yes, indeed. So, but people beyond, you know, the folks that have that sort of problem, like mm-hmm. teenagers of like all types, they often feel really oppressed. So lemon balm is particularly good for them as well. Right, yeah, feeling overwhelmed. If you mm-hmm. can push that away from you, yeah, yeah that's good for you. Yeah, it's all, he was using it fresh. However, there's lots of other ways to use it. There sure are. We can use it fresh or dried. I normally, now see, here's, See, this is an area where there's a lot of contention. Right, exactly. <laughs> Here we are with that pausing piece in our head. Um, I had always been taught, always use it fresh. Yes. Always, always, always. And I would scoff. I would scoff with my snarky scoffiness at using it dried. And truthfully, I've had mm-hmm. some dried lemon balm purchased from a rather reputable source that didn't make a very good tea. Right. It was rather bland and tasteless. And I thought, well, uh, you know. What's, what is the point here? Yeah, so I believed them saying, oh, don't bother with with dried lemon balm. It's right. just not worth it. Right, I understand that too. And and yet I have also had, I've because I, I didn't have any other option, I've made lemon balm syrup, which we use in the clinic all the time, with dried. And it's just a matter of processing it more. And it was also effective. It, was it, working, did, yeah. it wasn't as dark as using the fresh. Right. And well, and research has shown now that mm-hmm. if you process it from older plants, it works. Right. Because these plant, the lemon balm plants, they have lots of different volatile oils in them. And different, depending on the type of plant that you have, the older plants are going to hold in those essential oils better. They've got a thicker, more robust leaf. And the leaf yeah. structure itself is what holds in those volatile oils that we use for its properties for calming people down. Right. So one of the keys to harvesting good lemon balm is going to be to know what stage of growth you want your plant to be at and what you're planning to use it for. Mm-hmm. That's right. And that brings us back to making sure you've got the right plant altogether. Yeah, that's, yeah before you head out to start harvesting. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about some key ID tips. Right. So if you look at a lemon balm plant, 
Um, it's in the mint family, and it, it's fairly a uh, boring-looking plant. It just looks like a mint, like any other yeah, mint. Yeah, looks like a mint it's with alternative leaves, and yeah, they're and they've got that. They've green. got they've got a more lush look to them in the spring, mm-hmm. you know, when they're younger. But yep. later in the season, the same plant will have less lushness, less of that. These these pictures that we have here are the the lush springy type. Yeah. So they'll get a little bit more dried and dense looking, but they still look very much yeah. like the mint. first year. It'll just be more single plants, and then the second year it'll be more gl- growing in a clump. You can see that uh, for all of our mints, we're looking for a, a square stem. Yep. Which is very indicative. Important. Very, very important. Very indicative. Yeah. And then the the leaves come off alternatively, right? You know, from the from the stem, and also of course the smell. Yeah. Key. It smells like lemon. So it smells like kind of, to me, it smells a little bit like a mix between lemon and lemongrass. Mm, it's right. It's got a similar to lemongrass. It reminds me a little bit of some of the cleansers, like, mm-hmm. um, I can't remember the name of the brand names, but like Murphy Oil Soap. Oh, right. Yeah. It smells a little bit like that. Yeah. But with a little more lemon yeah. scent to which it. Which is, then those are, you're smelling the, the citral, the volatile oils, which there are a couple of different volatile oils in there. So smell for that kind of complex scent and that will also let you know so now if you want to know whether or not you're harvesting a first year or second year or mm-hmm. some other later than second year patch one of the ways you can do that is who's brilliant idea this is really nice. we'll look for the spent flowers yeah yeah exactly so it's got these spent flowers then yeah, this you is, know it's this clearly is, the second year <laughs> this is what my neighbors have to look like look at in my front yard <laughs> right all so, of those lovely spent flowers and I, you yeah, leave them on there because of the birds yes there's these tiny little finch like birds and I forgot to look up which ones they are, so mm-hmm. I'm sorry. But they're small, really, really small. And they perch on those fine stems, and the stems don't tip over. And they sit there and they eat the seeds out of the lemon balm. Nice. And they do that in the spring, typically before it starts to, like, when the when the lemon balm's as small as you see in this picture, mm-hmm. it's about the time they're done. So they're picking the seeds before everything else in the environment's really starting to provide a lot of the robust seed qualities, the proteins and stuff you get in seeds. Right. So I feel like it's really important for them. Yep. So I keep it. So the first year plants, again, you normally are going to see just one or two. Yeah. And then the second year plants, it's growing in a clump. And, of course, noting that it has, <laughs> it has, has. Have clear evidence that it's <laughs> been here before. It's got the ghost of the season past. So... Look for the flowers, and that's also how you would know. So one of my favorite ways for harvesting lemon bulb is what we call the heck back technique. The heck back? Yeah, you heck it back. After the first, you go, you would go out there, and you heck it back, and you take that stuff that you hacked at back, uh-huh. the tops, and you use those, right? Okay. So you're going to use those however you're processing them, mm-hmm. and then you let it grow back up. And you can do that just like you do with nettles a couple of times before – the lemon balm is done. Mm-hmm. Once lemon balm goes to seed, it, it once it gets close to seeding, it doesn't taste as good. Right. And yep. if most of the time I'm processing with fresh lemon balm. Right. If you want to use dried lemon balm, then you're probably going to wait until it's closer to flowering. You don't want it to flower. So you'll have to catch it. You have to watch you the leaves. All that volatile oils yeah. in the leaf, not moving up to the... Exactly. That's when it's trying to attract the bees and all those pollinators by putting those smells into the flower. Right. You so, want it in the leaf. So yeah, your hackback technique is for when you're planning to use a lot of it fresh. It, mm-hmm. And it, what will happen is the lemon balm will spring back up. It works with all of the mint family. I do this with my spearmint patch as well. So I can get several harvests of spearmint that are all really wonderful and have that fresh, young flavor to mm-hmm. them by hacking it back, Toothpaste letting it grow back. Flavor. Yeah, yep. exactly. Mm-hmm. So it works really well for the lemon balm. And then if you know that you're planning to use it for drying, wait, but watch your leaves carefully. As you watch them go through the season, you'll see a point where they... they have a. It's a very hard to describe, but there's a qualitative change to them. They have a slightly tougherness. They can get a little bit, the green becomes a slightly deeper color. Right. It gets a little bit of that brown tinge. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. if you smell it, you'll smell, like smell them a lot in the spring or in the early when they're young and then wait later on when they're drier, when they get closer to flowering, the smell will change slightly and the flavor will change slightly. Mm -hmm. It gets more of a musky. Yeah. 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 Yep. And we're not looking for that part. Mm -mm. No. So I use mine a lot during the season. I use mine fresh a lot. 
like just as we're using them. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of tincturing right. and syrups. And that's a great preservation te technique. Yeah. Yep. You had a brilliant one, though. Oh, yes. Oh, the brilliance of Sue. Here and it worked, it worked wonderfully for me this last year. So Are you talking about freezing it? Yes, I am. Yep. It's yeah. a beautiful one. So because we prefer the fresh lemon balm and it is a seasonal thing, then a cut up a bunch of it and then just rinse it and put it immediately into a Ziploc baggie and stick it in the freezer. And it was beautiful. Yep. So this season, during the mid mid season, mid winter, when everything else was frozen too, family was ill and I decided lemon balm seemed like we needed to get, we were ill. A tail, digestive thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. digestive. And we were also tail end of illness and just feeling bad. Like, oh God, I've been sick so long. Oh, I'm depressed. Right. So I was like, okay, lemon balm's a good one to pull out of the freezer and because the freezing process has already broken the cell structure down, you don't mm -hmm. really have to do any kind of real boiling or anything like right. that. So I got to the end of making my syrup and the decocting and all of that. Before I strained the herbs off, while well, I was letting it cool down, I threw the lemon balm in there, covered it up with a nice heavy cover mm -hmm. so that all, anything that evaporated, I could when I took the cover off, I poured that back in. Right, because you're so, trying to keep, keep yeah. those volatile oils in. Yep. Right, yep. Mm -hmm. and it worked beautifully. Nice. It was, and it was easy. Yeah. super easy yeah yeah well, so what are the properties of lemon balm sue oh brilliant brilliant sue oh brilliant sue the properties <laughs> <clears throat> well, the properties we're focusing on because right. there's so many it's uh antiviral it's antibacterial and then for uh it's a carminative and an antioxidant and uh you you like to use this yeah. this term the the bridge to health it kind of is it's sort of like a bridge to health it carries you from feeling pretty crappy into feeling serene calm and your body is able and ready to start digesting properly mm -hmm. and if you don't digest well what are you getting into your system if your right. body doesn't have nutrients how the heck is it going to get well right you can't fix the problem if you don't have the building blocks nutrients are the building blocks lemon bell balm helps to open the bridge yeah. So that, that's, that's where it start. That's where we always start. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the cooling, drying, serene aspect of lemon balm. I mean, it, it's sedative. It calms you down. It does. It helps you relax. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very important. And it's a good thing to mix into things, too. Not just because it tastes good, because that's another piece of it. The medicine ain't so good unless it goes in your mouth. But it also just is a nice carrier. It blends well with other things. It's easily accessible, at least in this environment. Mm -hmm. And even when Safe you're harvesting kids. it. It's good for kids as yep. well as adults and seniors. Yep. It's a fairly versatile herb. Yep, very what true. It, I, I mean, we use it for digestion, like if you have indigestion, for mm -hmm. instance. Or if you're dealing with, you know, upset stomach or anxiety stomach. I don't know if anybody else has that. That's what I call it. When mm -hmm. I'm anxious and worried about something. Or I'm anxious... Because my hormones just are anxious and sure. I don't have anything to be worried about. People who have anxiety disorders will know exactly what I'm talking about. Right, yeah. You know, and your stomach can get really upset. Lemon balm is a really good one because it helps to calm the anxiety, but it also helps your stomach to settle it right down. Settles, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. One of the ones I thought was really <clears throat> interesting that you've used it for is herpes. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's specific against the, the virus family that includes mono, shingles, chicken pox, uh, both herpes simplex and herpes and herpes simplex one and herpes simplex two. Mm -hmm. So it's good for both of those. And you see a lot of research that talks about uh, the, the use against herpes and how actually pretty quick it can work. And a yeah. lot of times you're, what you're reading is using the essential oil, which is actually very, very, very expensive it but is. what i've noted from practical experience is also just using a syrup you know, yeah. it's a it's a gentle way of doing it yeah. and it, keep keep letting people remember that when you're having an outbreak it took a while to get to the point where you're having that outbreak so give your body some time of continuously using that lemon balm to cool it down and when you start feeling like that little itchy feeling if you've got shingles for example the shingles that goes into your eye or the one that's on the rib then you start feeling that itchy feeling that's when you first start taking the lemon balm once you're used to the idea this helps me yeah yeah so and it's also, nice one of the things <clears throat> i think is brilliant about it is it's topical or internal you can use Indeed. it either way mm -hmm. so you know i made a lemon balm um, lip balm 
not oh, that long ago right? for, cold sores, that. Yeah. for cold sores. For cold sores, because mm-hmm. I know someone who has them pop up every now and then when he's stressed out. Yep. And so I gave him that, and it worked well. Yeah. yeah. It's another thing that if you've made lemon balm like an oil and you could use a very loose salve, you could use it for herpes in other areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, combine that with licorice, for yeah. example. Yeah. Yeah. So another brilliant thing that you found. You're oh. so brilliant. You're oh, brilliant. Keep saying that. Yes. You are brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's just full of antioxidants. Yeah. That's the other thing that we've noted. And um, the antioxidant properties are, um, it, it's very highly concentrated. Um, it, it's got a high phenol content. And it also includes some of the rosemaric acids. Uh, they, um, that's what you would have for your immune modulating activities. And it's, it, you're going to see a lot of research on that one if people are yeah. interested in that. But with your antioxidants, you know, one of the things that will help your body heal, and this is what helps your immune system, is that your white blood cells eat those antioxidants. That's mm-hmm. its food. Yeah. So if you want to just help your body heal, you're, you know, drinking tea and making sure you're well hydrated because your white blood cells need to travel through the, the they're the they're the minority in yeah. your blood. It's mostly mm-hmm. like water and then there's red blood cells. So you yeah. need to have space for those white blood cells to pass through. So keep yourself very well hydrated and then take lots of antioxidants to feed the white blood cells so that it can go through and it can take out those nasty little bits that are the and bacteria probably, and the viruses that and, are and causing free, trouble. Yeah, and the antioxidants bond with the free radicals so they stop doing as much damage in your body, Yep, which is one of the causes that's linked to um, aging and a variety, wide variety of diseases, including chronic internal inflammation. Mm-hmm. So if you're taking antioxidants regularly, and honestly, I think everyone should be, mm-hmm. you're doing a lot to help preserve the systems you have and prevent them from getting right. f- you know, in further damaged. Mm-hmm. Stress is a big mm-hmm. one that leads to causing problems with um, c- creating free radicals. That's right. That's right. So, so this the lemon, lemon balm, balm is helps a, with stress. Yeah, it's a beautiful... St- solution because it offers up antioxidants to clean up the mess from the stress and it helps bring your system back down into balance to get rid of said stress or to at least learn how to manage it in a way that isn't as damaging yes and it's it's kind of cool because that it works as a tea so it's a simple tea to take regularly the antioxidants will be drawn out into the tea Mm -hmm. so it makes it easy yeah and of course we're always talking about taking it fresh but dried is okay. Yep, dried, dried is okay. okay. And we're learning more and more about it all the time. That's one thing that um, Candace and I have both learned is we've had to let go of our bias. Yeah, it's about always dry. You have good to, to learn. keep learning. You Caution, learn. you must keep learning. Yeah. <laughs> there are a couple of cautions relating to lemon balm. One of them is most definitely researched and clear, and that would be the one relating to thyroid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it is contraindicated for people that have... Uh, thyroid disorders, and it's really important if you do have problem with your thyroid that you talk to your healthcare practitioner. It's, so, for it, those of you who are like more versed in what your thyroid disorder may be, what lemon balm does is it's help, it sort of suppresses the thyroid. Mm-hmm. So, if you have an overfunctioning thyroid, lemon balm might be a good solution. But if right. you have an underfunctioning one, it's going to make the problem worse. Yeah. So, also there is a lot of people that are allergic to things in the mint family. Yes, so of course. This is in the mint family, so it's really important that we, we keep those things that we are allergic to out of the way. We've also seen a couple references, and I'm not sure if these are very accurate or not, but we've seen references to being cautious if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Right. I have not yet figured out why. I don't know what the science might be behind those. I've looked into it, and I really have. I yeah. didn't and, dug around, and I've just seen they're using it a caution. But I've also noticed in some of the, like the Mayo Clinic, well, for almost every herb, they'll say, well, be careful in pregnancy. Yeah. You know, your body does change a lot when you're pregnant. Right. And I love citrus, but when I was pregnant, for one of my pregnancies, citrus right. was not my friend. Right. So being careful from pregnancy to pregnancy and being aware of how you react to things, it's just that's just common sense right there. But I don't think it means, from everything I've read, that 
it's contraindicated in pregnancy. It's just yeah. be careful. Yeah. I think with any herb, it's always wise to go slowly if you're pregnant or if you're preparing to be pregnant or if you have just been pregnant, mm-hmm. especially if you're breastfeeding. Right. With any herb, it's wise to just proceed carefully and, and maybe do a little bit of research on your own. Right. With lemon balm, I don't know why I, why some places have done that caution. Mm-hmm. I've also seen quite reputable herbalists say, yeah, Lemon balm for pregnancy, very good. Yeah, it is. I, so I, I used it a lot myself. I'm leaning in that direction, but I got to say, no matter what, you right? Know, do your science, do your research, but right. take responsibility for your own health and make smart cho- smart choices. And for anything that is a green plant, if you're on warfarin, a high a high dosage of warfarin, any green plant that's got vitamin K, so please be careful of that. However, I honestly don't think that anybody should be taking so much lemon balm that the vitamin K right. level in a teaspoon is going to be a danger to them. However, again, check with your healthcare professional. Exactly. So if you'd like to learn more about lemon balm, you can take a look at the lemon balm resources at the Practical Herbalist, practicalherbalist.com. Mm-hmm. We've got a whole wide variety of wonderful stuff for you there. Yeah, lots of recipes. It, it, uh, as far as bringing it into formulas, and we've got some tips on there, and we try to try to kind of uh, give you a, a good taste of what life life with lemon balm is like. Yes, and of course, make sure that you like, share, and link to us. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. Yep.